Hi, I'm Dr. Basu, Patrick Basu from New York. I'm an associate professor at Columbia University. I'm a gastroenterologist and hepatologist and also a transplant hepatologist. I came to this conference. Uh, it was really a unique experience, very unique experience. And uh, to be uh, very explicit and to talk about this conference, it is an excellent translation from the bench to the bedside. The disease, celiac disease, is so common and so prevalent in this country and all over the world, actually. And we uh, didn't identify the disease or kept the disease, kept the disease in a shelf for a while. And now we understand, not only understand the biology of the disease, we unfold the gene, the genetics, of course, the molecular biology, and over the years, particularly two decades, what we learned, an immense knowledge in our hand. Now we bring it to the clinics, and I think there's a huge amount of consciousness all over the world, particularly in America now, that celiac disease not only is so prevalent amongst us, maybe our next door neighbor has the disease, we don't know. The disease is not a benign disease, has a lot of consequences and morbidity and mortality. So what we learned before over the 35 years, the disease is benign and just don't eat wheat, barley and rye, but that's not true. Actually, some set of people, they don't have the clinical phenotype, but they have the genotypical celiac disease, but that sometimes they have silent disease or latent disease. But in, in the, after the disease progresses on, you can have other manifestations besides the gut manifestations of disease, and that can cause cancer, lymphoma, etc. So this disease is very important, and of course, the fatigue is the salient cause and the clinical manifestation of the disease. But here, if you don't intervene earlier, then we can really have a future complications, morbidities, and eventually a lot of quality of life issues and burden of, of lymphomas and other, other factors. The disease can affect kidneys, heart, kidneys, neuropathy, seizure disorders, and it was not really a disease of the pediatric populations. In adult populations, it's very prevalent. In fact, disease manifests after 2025. 20, women really suffer. There is a ratio between three to one, women and men. And a subset of celiac disease is not only only Caucasians now. Even in North India, we have celiac disease. In Japan, we found celiac disease. So there was a lot of epidemiology. Now, we found out from the pool data from all over. Alessio uh, Fasano had exquisite slides. Besides, there are speakers. They came from different countries, actually, particularly Australia and Netherlands, and their work was overwhelming work. Not only the genetic work, not only the basic the work on microbiology, but it has a nice evidence-based, lucid translations and have a nice marriage between the molecular biology, genetics, and clinics. So we learned a lot. And I really, really admire AGA to bring this up as the first time single topic. And we hope every year, maybe every other year, we'll again congregate to understand the disease and unfurl much more obscure things which is not yet done.